Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. The LP400 might not exist, but there is a different maker of guitar that is very similar. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the Jazz Pauletta, made by Slamen Guitars. Honestly, I'm not sure if I pronounce that Slamen or Slamen. But let's take a look at this. First off, you're probably wondering, how did I even stumble upon this? Is this where the inspiration for the LP400 April Fool's joke slash custom order came from? No. So I actually found this because I bought a guitar from somebody who's really into jazz guitars. So I showed him my LP400 thinking he would fall in love with it. And he'd go, you know, there's actually a boutique maker that does something very similar. And he sent me this. And I was like, oh my goodness. Now I get it, coming up with a Les Paul and making it a jazz guitar, it's not that hard to conceive. But this one took it a step further with a Charlie Christian styled pickup. So I thought we would take a look at this iteration tonight. So first off, um, that body shape is a little bit too exact. It is pretty much a one for one Les Paul going on here. But you'll notice some interesting characteristics here. This is more so like a Les Paul Custom. It's got that super multiply binding going along the body. Let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers of binding. So, yep, that's right. But it's got this strange finish going on. It reminds me of like a perfectly stark white satin TV white finish. I've never seen one of his guitars in person, so I'm not sure if this is like natural distressing within his finish. It could also be that he just slightly ages them because I see a couple of nicks and dings and this is listed as brand new. But the paint shrieking is kind of interesting. You have some wear in natural locations. It's almost like he was going for some finish checking. Like this whole thing gives me Gretsch vibes for some reason. I'd be curious how this would feel because as far as the looks go, I kind of dig it. Reminds me of a white penguin. As far as the rest of the guitar goes, it's just a regular trapeze style tailpiece. I believe he calls it the 250 style. And he's got one of those like floating bridge style wooden ones on here, except for it's not floating. It's drilled directly into the top. All he needs is that fake wooden veneer like I had specked out on my. If I had to get rid of that, I think having just a wooden bridge in general would bring some of those jazzy vibes to this. And it should affect the tone, I guess. And check these knobs out. They have arrows pointing to where you are. With what I would guess would be a master volume and a master tone. Not necessarily in a regular Les Paul layout, but staggered enough that it kind of makes sense for the guitar. Maybe this is what gives it more so Gretsch vibes. But you can't forget our pickup here. A good old Charlie Christian pickup. So he's a famous, famous jazz guy. But I have not had the honor of having one of these pickups in person, so I really don't know what to expect, except for certain variations of them are giant. I mean, we're talking so giant, once you get to the back. <laughs> yeah, there's this route back there in order to make it fit. Now the guy who sent me this one, he's actually having him like uh, custom build him. I don't think it was one of these, it was something different, but he was actually going to just have him encase it in there. I mean, if it goes bad, yeah, your whole guitar is now kind of out of luck. But at least then you don't have the giant ugly back route. I suppose you could put it in after the fact if something happened to the pickup. But I get it, you know, from a production standpoint why they would do that. But it is cool how they have the tortoise shell going along right there. And then the back is also matched with a tortoise shell like material. So this whole entire thing is kind of distressed. Like did they go as far as uh, just exposing like mahogany or is that actually tortoise shell binding just on the back? I'm not too sure on that because that does suspiciously line up just perfectly with the edge of the guitar. I'm really curious about this finish though. I never noticed just how worn it looked. I just thought it was like a slightly see-through finish, but seems to me like they were going for like ultra relic because even the face of the headstock has got some stuff going on. But they've got the open book style headstock, except for they just don't have the notch right there with the brand name right here with what looks like Grover tuners that have also been aged. I like the truss rod cover. That looks great, especially since they use the slotted style screws because it just makes it look super vintage. Now, as far as the fretboard, I would guess that's ebony, but it's really streaky ebony. And we have some sort of a, a block inlay with multiply binding along here, but there's no fret nib, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Honestly, guitars with multi multiply binding that kind of encompass the entire thing, fret nibs, they're not as important because usually they only cover the end of it anyways. 
But just from the back, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would think, oh, is this like some sort of Les Paul Jr. that somebody has just modified with Grover tuners? Because, I mean, that headstock is a little bit too exact. But that is what they call the Jazz Pauletta. I think we all know what he was going for here. So our listing price for this one, when it was for sale at this dealer, CR Guitars, was $5,900 for something like this. Ooh, it does look like we do have some specs that we can go through here. So the official title is Jazz Pauletta Yvette. Ooh, whoa, with a Western Red Cedar cutaway. Is the body made of Western Red Cedar? I haven't ran into that too often in the Gibson and Fender realm of things. But I suppose that makes a little bit more sense why we're seeing some red peeking out back here. And the top is two-piece carved redwood. You know, I want to try one of these things out even more now that I know it's not just the standard stuff. So what is our fretboard? I was correct on that. It is ebony. And for the neck, they've got traditional mahogany. As far as scale length, 24 and 3 quarters. Nothing fancy there. Nut width is normal. Should be kind of like a medium rounded neck profile, I would say, with dimensions like that. And they're calling that finish antiqued off-white nitro finish. Okay. And it only weighs, whoa, 7.2 pounds? I wonder if it's chambered or anything, or if just that redwood stuff is super lightweight, because you know, a solid body, 7-pound guitar. I mean, you also got to understand there's a, a giant route out of the back of it. Interestingly enough, you know, a brand new guitar comes with the Grolsch strap lock system. All right, but you're gonna see that this one was ended. And I'm not sure how long ago this thing was listed. So I looked these things up and CR Guitars in New York is their only dealer, according to this guy's actual website. His name is Daniel. It looks like he makes all kinds of stuff, mainly jazz arch top, but he does do the solid body ones if you go to this website. But it looks like he makes these in the Netherlands. So just in case this antique off-white one's not the one for you, what else has he done? Here's kind of a more traditional one with like a reddish flame top. All the pickups and electronics are about the same, but ooh. Interesting choice to go with dots. Not ooh, I like that. That looks good. I'm not sure what kind of top that is, but the wood grain of that, I think fits this better than a flame top because this looks very modern, kind of hot rotted out, but vintage at the same time. But this, you know, just reminds me of an old arch top. And that's exactly what I'm going for on these things, especially the fact that it's unbound with the dot inlays. That works on this one. But this is like, what, an ES-125 or something like that? That'd be amazing to have a sharp pointy cutaway. Here we've got kind of a natural looking one with trapezoid inlays. This one's got block inlays. Did he do a 34 burst? Here's something kind of similar to what I was brainstorming myself, a, a smaller burst. I think those look great on these. The only thing I don't like about these is the back view. Maybe instead of back plates, he could find a way to do like a sliding system that you can just put a small veneer over back here. Like, and it just locks into place on the guitar. That way, if you ever need to take it out, you could just move it up to remove it. And then you just like cap that area off with some binding. That way you can't necessarily tell it. That'd probably be uh, more trouble than it's worth. And here's one that has a bridge pickup. I just don't think it works. You know, these older arch toppy guitars, even though technically it's a, a more versatile instrument having two pickups, it's more of an aesthetic thing for me just to want the neck. Here's another natural one. Pay close attention that it does not have any binding though. Interesting. So if you're wanting to order one of these, there's a very important disclaimer on his website that these are not made to order. He only sells them if they're under the stock on his website. Unless you want to do a left-handed one. So let's see if he's actually selling anything right now. Looks like this particular one's currently listed as reserved. I like the chicken head knobs. Because this one, Louise, Claudia is straight up sold. Mystery solved on the Yvette. That was what he called this particular one. But that one's also been sold. But it looks like the one that he's named Claire is available at 3,600 euro. That's that natural one we were looking at before. That two pickup one is at 4,000 euro. 4,250 on this one, but oh, Does this have a piezo system in it? It looks like it does. 
So hey, it was cool to know that these things do exist. There is a maker of them out there. I'm not quite sure the legality of this guy making them like this. I just wanted to share it because it was very similar to the design that I was thinking in my head. So for today's playing demo, I actually do have a playing sample of one of his creations. <laughs> question left would you rock one of these jazz paulettas or not leave your answer down in the comment section below don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode take care